Companies that don't trust their employees is freaking frustrating and is a huge impediment to productivity. You know, I've I've seen this trend for a while now in software uh, engineering, and maybe this is happening in other careers too. But I really have been feeling it. You know, I have didn't feel like this uh, when I started programming. You know, a uh, full time twenty seven years ago. Uh, but now it just seems like there's no company out there that trusts their employees anymore. Now, I know that's not true. I know there are some companies out there, but it seems to me, at least the, the majority of companies that I deal with or people tell me about, just flat out don't trust their employees. It's really hard to work for companies that don't trust you, uh, flat out don't trust you right from the get go. And, uh, and, and including companies that just continuously make it worse. I'm going to give you some examples. Micromanagers, you know, uh, I, you know, one trait of a micromanager is that they don't trust their employees. And so they have to constantly be on top of them, micromanaging every freaking thing they do, making the employee prove every single second they, you know, spend on what each day um, they don't listen. Uh, they're really just out for making themselves look better to the people above them. You know, this this is one of the places where the mistrust starts to me is is managers and micromanagers, just bad managers, you know, really to me. You know, not letting uh, uh, people work remote. I know a big reason before the pandemic that a lot of companies, including the one I'm currently working for, uh, don't trust their employees enough to let them work remote. And um, so I'm hoping that, you know, the pandemic has been showing companies this is not true in most cases. Uh, unfortunately, I see a lot of companies all right, already sliding back into making people come back in now, uh, which, again, I don't understand. So it, if you don't trust your workers to work remote, maybe you need new workers or new managers. You know, I'm not really <laughs> sure what the solution to that is. You know, I worked at one company that every year they asked me to to sign a document saying that I didn't commit a felony in the last year. And if those of you who don't live in uh, America, a felony is a, is a criminal act uh, that you can uh, be charged with. And it's if you have a felony, um, it's, it's really, really hard to get a job in America if you have a felony, especially jobs like I have. You can't get if you have a felony. But why do you ask me every year? Do you really not trust me? Come on. You know, so here's some impediments to work uh, that just recently happened to me. We talked about Octa tokens. You know, they give us Oct Octa tokens to debug stuff that lasts 30 seconds. Do you know any debugging session that lasts under 30 seconds? Uh uh, come on. Uh, read only access to AWS console. Yes, people. I, I want to do a whole nother show on this, but where I work, we've been begging for access to the AWS console for well over two years, and we still don't have access uh, to anything but read things. I can't do anything on AWS, including executing <laughs> microservices. And the reason is they don't trust us. They think we're going to do something that's going to charge a lot of money to the company, at, uh, constantly logging into Okta during the day. And even some systems I logged into Okta go to another system that's controlled by Okta and I have to log in again, literally 10 seconds later. You know, it, the amount of times we have to log into Okta a day is just horribly frustrating and it is an impediment to work. You know, where I currently work, they put your user folder on a network drive. I'm assuming so they can see what you're doing. I know it's part of a backup, but I'm sure they want to see what things you're storing in there also. Uh, but the problem that I discovered and why I refuse to use their laptops is Visual Studio uses that user folder for caching and stuff like that. And when you put that user folder on a network drive, Visual Studio turns into a nightmare. Visual Studio is already slow enough. But when you put that stuff on a network drive, my teammates at work, Visual Studio crosses throughout the day. And there's one project at work they can't even load because Visual Studio will crash just loading it. And blocking external websites, like my coworkers at work now can't even go to Gmail to check a, an order status or to maybe update something or to contact their, their school for some reason about something about their kids. They can't even do that now. They've locked everything down so much. And they just keep continuing locking everything down to the point where we just, it is so hard to get work done there. I really don't understand 
uh, what they're doing. But, you know, for me, trust is important in any relationship. I don't care if it's your wife or husband or girlfriend or boyfriend or friend or family member or manager or company at a CEO, you know, the CEO of the company, every that every you have to believe in trust and and want to be surrounded by people who trust you. And companies are just making this so toxic that no one wants to work there. And when no one wants to work there, guess what happens? Everybody leaves. That's a problem because all of a sudden we've lost a huge drain, uh, brain trust in just a couple weeks, a couple months. I just don't get it. You know, uh, companies need to explain this for me, to me. And, and companies, and, and you wonder why we don't trust you <laughs> because you don't trust us. <laughs> you know, companies, things have to come from the top down, right? And, it, and if you don't trust your employees, maybe you have the wrong employees or maybe you have the wrong culture at your company, right? You know, maybe look at inward a bit and, uh, you know, see where this mistrust is coming from and fix it. You'll have happier employees, you'll have happier customers, and you'll retain your employees, right? It's a no-brainer, people.